Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, those of you walking around the hallways, the talk is right here. You can sit down. I see a few empty seats over there. Um, while people are waiting for their friends or people are trying to look for a seat, I'm going to stall a little bit. So I'm going to talk about myself. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan Flood. Um, some of you may have seen me before. I've been speaking with Salesforce for about three years now. I've been reviewing App Exchange since 2014. So you may have been on an office hours with me if you're one of our Salesforce partners. Um, we've seen a lot of change in Salesforce since 2014. We've seen a lot of change, frankly, since 2018. You saw our great MuleSoft booth. I'm sure most of you have heard that news. We've acquired a lot of companies. We've launched a lot of great, awesome products. Einstein, Lightning, there's been a lot of awesome stuff happening. Um, and one of the things that we wanted to share with all these lessons learned was our company has grown a lot. We've had to scale. We have these, this wonderful Trailhead X, which didn't exist when I started. And we want to take those lessons learned and give those to you. How do we scale like this, but securely? Because I think that if there was news of a breach, we wouldn't be in the same boat. We wouldn't all have this love and trust for Salesforce. And so we've invested very heavily in that. So I, what, one minute, two minutes over? I can stall a little longer and make the lawyers happy. Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Please make any purchasing decisions based on what is currently available, not the content of this talk. I'm not really going to talk a lot about Salesforce besides some of the processes and practices we follow. I'm not going to talk about products. I'm not going to talk about what to buy or any of our strategic partnerships. This is mostly a high-level talk. But really, this talk is all thanks to you. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for all of our amazing customers, all of our trailblazers, our partners who help enable the Salesforce economy to grow. The App Exchange has been one of the best things I consider in my career to work on. I've seen so many businesses grow and thrive through the App Exchange. And if, for those of you who may have had a hard time passing the security review to get listed, we've seen a lot of uplift in the security scene between all these different varying sizes of companies, from small shops with just maybe five, 10 employees, to big industry companies, 10,000 plus employees. I was walking around the audience earlier today, um, well, earlier this hour, trying to gauge the size of, the, uh, of your companies. And I think my odds are about correct. I think about 40% of you are within the 500 to 5,000 range. Is that true? Can we get a show of hands for 5,000 to 500 employees? Yeah? I am very bad at math. <laughs> Bigger than 10,000? I'm going to put up my hands a few times. <laughs> um, smaller than 100. OK. Smaller than 100, you guys win. Um, maybe you can all group together, and then you can outnumber everyone else. But <laughs> cool. As we scale, we really need to figure out um, who are our big enablers, and who's this talk geared towards. So executives, you're the people who steer the cruise ship. You set the direction, and then you know that you're going to be traveling that direction for five to 10 years. You can't take a hard left or a hard right too quickly at a big scale. We want to make sure we're going in the right direction together. The ground level managers, there's a lot of tools and tactics you can do to uplift the security of your area. And what's actually really um, where this talk started and where my expertise is, is in the automation system owners, the actual architects and the folks who build and maintain the systems we use every day. This is where security happens at the end of the day, is when we do things. So there's a lot for them to take away from this talk, too. But I want to start by setting a ground level question. Um, why is security important? Kind of a silly question, right? Everyone thinks, oh, yeah, security. In fact, everyone does it, right? I went on Google News earlier today and just typed in the phrase security to see what came up. Of the top 10 articles, eight were about computer security. One was about national security, and one was about a security guard. 
Cybersecurity is becoming one of the most important things in our modern world. The fourth industrial revolution, as we've all heard, really has put the emphasis on the customer and protecting the customer's data. We all don't want to be in the news for these computer security breaches. We all want to have compliance with these great regulations, with GDPR, with SOC 2, with whatever compliance you have. And frankly, security is assumed for most of our businesses. I don't sell a secure spreadsheet. I sell a spreadsheet, you assume security. But then that begs the question, OK, I can build a thing securely once, and then I sell it, and then we're done, right? Well, everything has a lifespan. So we need to figure out how to scale it. Why are we up here talking about scaling security? And one of the things that we found as a software company that works really well is embedding it everywhere. We call this the Salesforce Secure Development Lifecycle. You may have heard of other companies having secure development life cycles. I hope your company has a secure development life cycle if you're a software company. Um, but this is our take. This has a little bit of our spin. So we really want to embed security into every step of the process. And this doesn't only apply for software. I talked to a few of you out there who are admins. And this actually applies to admins, too. So whenever we release a new thing, we have to figure out what's the thing we're going to release. You want to roll out Einstein Activity Capture to all of your users so that you can pull in your emails, show it contextually on those records, enable your salespeople to understand who has the closest relationship to this lead. Well, first we need to understand that that's what we're doing and why we're doing it. We want to enable salespeople to sell better to leads. OK, so what are the requirements of that? I heard salespeople. I heard leads. I know it involves email. We want to set the ground rules. What are the system requirements? If we're pulling in emails, we shouldn't put our CEO in that group. Our CEO probably has payroll information, which we wouldn't want shown in Salesforce. So we need to define our threat model. We, we need to define what are the things we currently care about as well. Let's say, as most of you are familiar with, we have this amazing permissioning platform, CRUD, FLS, sharing. If I don't have FLS or I don't have access to see the email contact of a record, so I look at Joe Sales. He's a hot lead. He's from Microsoft. But I don't have access to his email. Should I see the email correspondence to and, for, to and fro from him? That's a hard question. I personally would say no for my company. Your company, you may have different rules. But that's what you need to define here in the design stage. Then we build it. We actually implement the things. We take a look at, if we're an admin, our profiles and permission sets and who has access to this. If we're a developer, we want to make sure that we're building with secure design patterns. All the systems we use are the most recent versions, have no security bugs. And then actually it comes time to test or verify. This is where we actually find out what we did and what we didn't do. Verification is great. We've all heard and all seen shows like Mr. Robot, where people are going and poking holes in companies and hacking them. Verify allows us to do that before they do. We want to go ahead and act actively test that. But the last part of this is release and monitoring. Take a look, taking a look at your logs, taking a look and listening to your user feedback to make sure that if something fishy is going on, you're aware of it. Or if something seems a little bit off to your users, you understand what their threat model is, because those two don't always align. So that's what we do from a process standpoint. But how do we get there to where we're operating within this process? We do three things here at Salesforce. Security is everyone's job. We are a 10,000 plus company. We're pretty big. Our security team is not a 10,000 plus security team. Otherwise, we wouldn't have as many sales as we do. We have a lot of salesmen. That's the point. We can't invest everything in security. We have to empower everyone to do security. You want to deploy specialists and champions. We do have a security team. Our security team is the specialists and champions that kind of guide the way. We set the goals. We show you what secure looks like. And we have deploy champions, which are embedded within each area to orient the teams towards that goal. 
and automate to scale. Nobody likes doing boring work. Nobody likes manually checking version numbers. So we should move on. We should have a machine do that for us so that us humans can focus on the important stuff. All right, let's dive into this. Make security everyone's job. People scale with companies, so we want to scale with people. Everyone's part of our solution. So like I said, define goals and conventions. This book by Adam Shostak is probably one of the best books on threat modeling out there. We have a whole library of it we give to our internal security engineers. And we have simple guidelines we want to do. We want to define the principles and conventions. For example, here at Salesforce, we always respect the admin security settings, your CRUD, your FLS, your sharing. If a feature doesn't comply with that, that feature isn't done. We want to document what is expected. So here at Salesforce, we have internal docs on how to do security. Also, if you visited our security booth or seen any of our security talks, we have external docs on how to build security on top of Salesforce, as well as what is the security Salesforce provides. Security documentation isn't only just for you and your users. It's actually for your sales team, too. Customers want security. If you have documentation to show them, we've thought about this. We've thought about what you want. Here is documentation on how to do it. That will really empower your salesmen to close a lot of deal-breaking issues. And lastly, threat modeling on, as part of the design. So formalize what we talked about. Formalize my CEO shouldn't be showing his emails on leads. That's OK. We just want to write that down, figure out why we don't want to do that, and prioritize the work that needs to get done accordingly. So we, don't we want to make sure that our admin doesn't assign the permission set with Einstein activity capture to the CEO. And just like functionality, security is part of working as designed. If it doesn't respect our principles and conventions, if the security model is not documented, we're not done. We can't release the product. We can't roll out the feature to our customers. The defined set of tasks comes out of threat modeling. Threat modeling helps you prioritize what gets you there. And we found that one of the best ways to do this is to make this fun. And so we let people be the bad guy. We let them use evil user stories. As an evil hacker, I want to read all of my CEO's emails. What do we do to prevent that? Or as an evil hacker, I want to bypass the authentication of the system so that I can read all of the data. Abuse cases are another common use, case, use to get us to a fun place. And other non-functional requirements, you have performance requirements, we should have security requirements as well. The last part of this is training. Most people want to do the right thing, but sometimes we don't know how. Documentation is one part of that, but hands-on training is another. Getting people to actually sit down with someone, understand what's important, why is it important, how do I do the important things, really actually lights a spark in most people's heart. We see, oh, I didn't know you could do that. How do I stop that? Um, here at Salesforce, we have documentation. We have our security dev center. We have Trailheads, interactive. We have Salesforce University. Um, there's actually an organization out there not affiliated in any way with Salesforce, not affiliated in a nonprofit way with Salesforce either, called SafeCode. They do have a lot of documentation and security trainings as well. I'd highly recommend them if you don't have a specialized security unit for your company. But if you do have that specialized security unit, this is for you. When we want to deploy specialists and champions to actually guide us to what is done. So here at Salesforce, I'm on the security team. So we build the tools and define done. We know what the new things are. What's the hot topics in the research, and how do I enable everyone to do it? We're building the tools just as the automation owners are. We just build security-specific tools. And lastly, office hours. Salesforce partners have access to AppExchange office hours with me or with other security engineers. Um, we hold internal office hours, too, for, people to, for engineers at Salesforce to come talk to our team. Just get general advice and training. 
We also have deployed security champions. Does anyone here know what a security champion is? I see one. I like it. So security champions, this is kind of a new topic within the security space. This is a deputized member of each team who then, using their context as well as the security training that you give them, enables them to self-serve on security. They'll still come to you through office hours, through documentation, through one-on-one -on -one conversations to understand the more complex issues or to understand what the next steps are for them to learn their own security. But really, it's a lot of fun. One thing we've done with our Security Champions program is we hold um, capture the flag competitions. I would like to use the term hackathon because it was actually eight hours, come hack this thing, see what you get. We have prizes for the people who win the most, whether it's little USB dongles that'll take over a person's computer, hoodies, or more interactive trainings down the line. Um, that really empowered our security champions to come and self-teach, as well as next year we had way more security champions. They wanted to take part in these activities. But really, security champions help us build security skills within the organization outside of our specialist subject matter expert area. But OK, so we have the organizational strength in security. That's great. We know that everyone is part of the solution. Security actually is everyone's job. Everyone has some role to play, whether it's reporting phishing or actually being on a security team. Fin finally, let's have the robots do the work. So with security, it's always a little hard because there's so much out there. So we want to use the right tool for the job. I want to talk about three things here that are all tied to the Salesforce ecosystem. So Providence is our fast and contextual security scanner. Providence is a check-in based scanner for those of you who are admins. When we write source code, we make incremental changes, very small. But when they get pushed to production, this scanner will go pull those small incremental changes, look for bugs in them, look for known misconfigurations, look for those anti-patterns, and alert immediately. This is really good because the user doesn't lose a lot of context. The person who made the mistake can go and fix it without having to research what they did last month. But if any of you have worked with the App Exchange before, and I hate to keep harping on it, but I love the App Exchange, and I love to answer questions about it, you've probably heard of check marks. This is our slower, more thorough source code analysis tool. We use it to scan every app on the App Exchange. It goes through all the source files, links them all together, and traces every possible code path looking for security vulnerabilities. This takes a lot longer but provides a lot more results that those small incremental code changes can't see. This doesn't only work for Salesforce. This actually wasn't built for Salesforce in the first place. This is a source code analysis tool which works on Java, Python, Scala. I don't know the rest of their product line. They're a great company. I'd highly recommend them. We offer free trials. Um, you can get, if you're a mem member of the public, we have a General scanner, if you're a member of the partner community, we have another scanner with three scans for every security review you do. Lastly, PMD. PMD isn't a security tool. It was a code analysis tool, a code linter. When you were writing your code, if you made a simple mistake, during the time when you were writing your code, it alert you, say, hey, something's wrong here. This is even faster and even more contextual than Providence, which I really like. Um, we put some security rules on top of it, which has caused some philosophical issues with the whole concept of a linter, but we did. Um, we're constantly improving it. I wouldn't call it done by any stretch of the imaginations. It is very much experimental. But I encourage you all, if you're writing Apex Visual Force, download PMD and install it into your environments. You'll see a lot, you'll see a lot of alerts of, in the beginning, and you'll be able to weed those down and knock those bugs out of your systems. But I talked a lot. I was interrupted by the speaker. In case any of you didn't hear, the big three things I want you to walk away from. Security is everyone's job. You can have these specialists and champions to empower the organization and make everyone a higher multiplier on security, but it needs to be everyone's job. And if you don't automate, people are going to end up resenting security for the less interesting work they do. 
I think I have some time for questions um, off in the hallway. And um, I am going to also say, I'm going to leave this up there while we're talking for questions. These are the rest of our, the security talks throughout the day. We have a booth over at right on the right of the Waterfall Theater. If you get the rightmost seat and take a look to your right, there we are. I'll be there waving at you. Um, but yeah, question? Definition of done slide. For those of you who are worried about seeing these slides, no need to take a picture of every single one. We, these will be recorded. These will be posted on the Trailhead X 2018 site later this year. I don't know when. We have a lot of AV to go through to cut out the before and afters, but it will be released. If anyone has any questions that they don't want to say publicly, I'll be standing down here by the monitor, or you can come talk to us at the security booth. Thank you all for coming. If you want some more tactical, hands-on experience, I'm going to leave this slide up for a few minutes while they usher me off stage. Thanks so much. <laughs>